common practice music theory textbooks uh, indicate that to approach an octave by similar motion is essentially bad. It's it's to be tolerated at cadences, and some people even say it might it might be good at cadences. It depends on on which books you read. But if you look you look at every single book together, uh, you'll see what they say is it's bad. It's basically bad. Uh, so the ersatz, which Shankarians tell us, uh, is at the back, at the very back of every uh, masterpiece, every tonal masterpiece, uh, is is this thing, and it has this, okay, has an octave by similar motion. So it's it's like sloppy counterpoint. Um, there are various arguments I've heard defending this. One is it's not it's not to be taken literally in my question as well here. If it's if that's not to be taken literally, then why not write some version of this that we can take more literally? Uh, that that argument also contradicts what Shankarians have said, which is um, that rules of counterpoint operate at all levels, and that really can't be true just based on what we know about the way fifths and sixths are used in alternation to essentially correct uh, what would otherwise be parallel fifths at, at some level. That's right in uh, period instruction books and counterpoint. That's not a Shankarian thing. Uh, but this is this is more extreme because it's it's supposed to be at the very the very root, the very back, the very basis of all all decent tonal music, including the great masterpieces. Why would, why would the great masters all happen to choose an example of sloppy counterpoint as the basis for everything that they do? Doesn't it seem just a little weird to you?